Expose the single recommended framework for React Native, but introducing the concept of frameworks for React Native meant there could be others in the future. And now a new promising framework called One was released. Does One have the potential to become a real Expo competitor? Let's check it out. At the recent VeetConf, Nate, the creator of Tamagoy, which most of you have probably heard of, released a new React framework called One. The promise is to simplify web and native development, which is definitely something that can be improved. One uses a mix of technologies you might actually be already familiar with, like React, of course, it's a React framework, um, React navigation with file-based routing, and the concept of loaders from Remake, which looks a bit like RSC, but we're gonna get into that. One does not use Metro and instead only Veed, so it's really only a Veed plugin and it's running for all platforms, web, native, iOS and Android. In Germany we say all theory is great, so let's see some code instead. I think it's always better to get a feeling for how the code looks instead of just repeating the marketing messages, so you can give this a try by running npx1. Let's copy this over to the terminal and let's run it. And this will bring up the question for how you want to name your app. Let's call this one test. And then you can select between three different templates. A minimal Tamagui setup, a full stack template with a lot of things and a minimal template. And of course, I created all these things for us so we can take a quick peek at what's going on. This is the most basic minimal template you can get. And I especially like how short the list of dependencies is. So we have Expo in one, um, so that means Expo is a dependency here actually, and we have React Native, React Native Web, uh, and down here we only have Veed. So I kind of like that this is super clean in here. We also do have a Veed conf, uh, config because it is basically just a plugin for Veed, so one is just a plugin here. Um, on top, if we check out our app, we're gonna see if you're coming from Expo and Expo Router, this looks kind of familiar. So we're gonna have to talk about this later. Uh, maybe there's going on some, some forking and uh, some drama, but I don't wanna talk about that. But um, if you come from React Native, this should in general feel very familiar. So let's check out if we go to the package JSON, you can just run uh, npm run one dev as far as I can see here. So we got a couple of script npm run dev. You could also of course use bun or other package managers. And then it is serving on port right here. So we should see hello world from one. Super fancy, but you can now also open this up with Expo Go, so you can press QR, which would show the QR code that I could scan my uh, with my camera. Or uh, how do I actually get to like, I wanna do this in the simulator. That's interesting. I would probably have to open up my simulator. Let's try. Okay, so I was actually able to achieve this by using exp and then my local URL and the port where uh, the example is running. It throws a little error, but nonetheless, we should see that we got live reload again. You could also just do it with your phone. And if we now follow the premise and go into this, we should see that uh, hello from Simon, we could change this and it should quickly update. So we got live reload without using Metro, which is quite interesting. Um, so all of this is powered by a package called, uh, how, I don't know, I have no idea how you pronounce this, but it's a package for Veed and React Native that also Nate or the team at One is working on. This actually looks kind of better. So a plugin to serve React Native apps with hot uh, reloading for web and native. This is quite interesting um, and definitely helpful. But now let's also move beyond this basic example into probably the medium example. So this one already has a few more dependencies because this is now also using Tamagui. Nate, the creator of one, is also the creator of Tamagui and he recommends using it because this gives you the most bang for your buck basically. Because with Tamagui, you're using these kind of optimized component. Um, Tamagui is always um, flattening your CSS and the output of it. So it's kind of optimized for the web and also for native. If you check this out, we should see, yeah, here's our Tamagui CSS and within the index file, we now have stored of like a Y stack. So if you've used Tamagui, these things should be familiar to you. Additionally, this now also, of course, should have probably a Tamagui config somewhere. Yeah, it's right here. 
so here's all the stuff for Tamagui. But again, the code here in the app folder is still pretty much similar. We only have a little separation that now if our layout is executed on the web, we include some meta information and down here we would have the general setup. So just injecting a couple of providers, but beyond that, not too much more. Only thing I notice is that this is using Biome. Uh, I think this is how you pronounce it. This is one of the tools that, you know, I'm all either super excited about something new and immediately use it, or I ignore it until everyone's using it and I'm kind of forced to use it. So I think this is quite cool. It's formatting and linting, but I honestly haven't taken a look yet. So convince me that I'm wrong in the comments and let me know if I should take a look. Now, let's probably also take a look at the advanced uh, example because this one is quite interesting because now we got a bit more going on. Again, if you use Expo Router, this should be familiar. We have some groups with parentheses, so we have a feed and we even have an API endpoint. So there are a couple of more things included and that's why I usually tell people, hey, try the minimal example and see what's going on because this is already also using Drizzle and some connection and there are more tools included that might confuse you. But just trying to boil it down what's possible. Um, a couple of things to point out here. First, you can run one in different modes. So you can run it in SPA mode and you can even have files with that ending. So you can have SPA, static site generation uh, or uh, static exports. So here are the modes. API, SPA, SSR and SSG. You can also set a default mode in your read config. This is quite interesting and you can have these routes specific for specific use cases. This is really interesting and super helpful, especially for the web. Another thing is that one is using the concept of loaders from Remix. I personally haven't used Remix a lot, but for people coming from Remix and maybe even from Next.js who might be a bit more familiar with this stuff, this is a concept that's also used under the hood of one. Uh, can we see this right here is a loader function for the profile. So this executes a fetch before the page is open. It retrie uh, retrieves some, it's actually doing quite a lot here. Uh, but nonetheless, we then have only this call to use loader on the profile page, which sets the data. And again, this example is of course using Tamagui. So you have a responsive layout and let's actually execute this. Okay, I can't really run this on the web. I got some issues because I, of course, haven't hosted any kind of database. This is a bit how it looks on mobile. Uh, we got a tab bar down here, but I can't do a lot because I haven't set up the rest of the stuff. But nonetheless, we can take a look at the code and point out a couple of other things. So in the package JSON, you will now also find a pre-built script. And if you're an Expo user, you might know that Expo Go is usually very limited and you soon have to do a pre-build, which seems to work with one as well. Additionally, you can have layout files for web, native, iOS, Android. Um, so just like we've seen with the different modes of SPA and the uh, file endings that you can use, you can also do pretty much the same for your layout. So here's a simple example. Um, also, Nate had a cool video somewhere. So I can't open it right now because Twitter and sizing here, but I will uh, add the picture. It is an interesting setup of routes. One more thing is called zero. And in the presentation, Nate put a lot of effort into showing why zero is so great. Honestly, it can't really be used yet as it's still in beta, but it seems to be like a general sync engine for the web improved um, uh, with focus also on local first things. Uh, honestly, I don't know exactly how it is and what it works. I got on the email list, so I will keep you updated about what zero is, but you can also use one without zero at this point. So more or less, this looks like a React Native project with Expo Router sprinkled in with additional flavor to make it more appealing for web with things like SPA, SSG or SSR. Uh, and additionally, the concept of loaders, which will help us to retrieve data. Uh, might be interesting to have a little comparison between the loader concept and React uh, native server components once they are out. But at this point, this is what you get for the initial templates of one. All right, so one is absolutely an exciting new framework for React, especially if you want to build and ship your apps fast for web, iOS and Android, because the current way that main people use of a mono repository with Expo and a Next.js app for the web is definitely way more complicated than what one offers. But Expo Router works also pretty great at this point for web and is continuously getting better. So hmm, 
thing we're gonna see the current stages page of one tells us that it's not a hundred percent ready for all platforms yet but uh, keep in mind that this was uh, announced barely weeks ago. Only time will tell what the weak points of one might be and whether it finds bigger market adoption currently sitting at around 2.5k github stars. Coming back to our original question, is this an expo competitor? Eh, one is using expo as a dependency so it can't be a direct competitor. It, it also doesn't offer all the benefits of using expo and one is most likely not really interested in doing so either. If you decide to use one, you will most likely end up using Expo as well. However, seeing some tweets, it definitely feels like there's something in the air between Evan, creator of Expo Router and Nate, but maybe that's just because they have some backstory, I don't know, maybe Nate forked it and used it as the base for one. I'm not really interested in the drama, there are other YouTubers better at that. But does one have the potential to become a popular React framework nonetheless? Absolutely! One's foundation really looks great to me and it's super simple and it's really eliminating the complexity of today's crowd platform development. While it's not a real expo competitor, it's still kind of an alternative approach to build React native apps at this point. But you probably wouldn't use it if your primary focus is only native apps. My final words, it's amazing to see innovation in the space and no matter where one ends up, new ideas always enrich the whole ecosystem for us developers. It's probably not my cup of tea as React Native has so many upcoming great features like the RSC in the next Expo SDK, the DOM components I recently showcased, strict DOM from Matter. For the moment, I trust in Expo and the development, but if you feel fancy and like new technology, give one a try and let me know how it worked for you. What are your thoughts on one? Um, maybe you've already tried it? It, let me know in the comments and also check out this video up here if you want to learn more about the expo dom components i just mentioned they are absolutely stunning especially for web developers i'll catch you in the next one so until then happy coding simon <laughs>